Well, today was a bit of a change of plan because the mist came down. And where we're going to go. So this is a bit of a hasty video put together on the spur of the moment. Last minute, remember what you know. <laughs> yeah, so uh, apologies if we have to go over a few things for you. Good doggies. Well, today we're down at uh, Salty Will again, but lower down because the mist isn't so prevalent. A footpath which goes close to the Cluggards. Past the Cushags, or Ragwort. Poisons the horses, they tell me. Sheep love it. A nifty little foot bridge to climb to uh, cross the river. Oh, I didn't see Roxy going over the bridge. Roxy! <whistles> Roxy! Ow. Come on, Roxy. Good. Come on then. Roxy hates bridges, so we'll show you. <laughs> Roxy! Stay here, fetch her back again. Oh, Roxy, come on. Here, Roxy. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't Penny, you like bridges, Penny, eh? come on. Penny! Come on. Ready? Just, just watch Roxy going away now. <laughs> You're mean. I'm guessing this must be the Sulby River, mustn't it? Yeah, it's a good flow there. So this is the Sulby, this is the Sulby River. Went down from Thalty Will. Obviously ends up in the sea. Good flow on it today. After all the rain, she's uh, in full flow. interesting I wonder what sort of bridge was here back in 1872 which there was a an event if you like around here well, there's a marker stone there for something isn't there yeah oh. come on then come on Roxy we don't have pokers I think we're going out Today's little walk is on um, private property, got permission. If I haven't told you already, I'll tell you again. This little area, this little hamlet was called the Cluggard. And I've um, done a bit of research on it, it's in one of my books, I've got one, a bit of history of it. <coughs> the area is quite famous for some. Uh, Deeds in the past. There used to be three little uh, homes in this area, but one's disappeared. We'll tell you about that when we get there. First one we're going to come to. What's it called again, Carla? What do we think? Well, this one. Yeah. Clog it, isn't it? Well, uh, there seems to be some. Um, discrepancies about its name. Some people say it's called Balakirka. And in some places we do research it is Balakirka and the Cluggit. So Or Cluggit. And it's not Cluggit, it's Cluggit. <laughs> and apparently it gets its name from the rock formation after the Cluggit Falls. After doing loads and loads of research. Um, until early hours in the morning. Yeah, we used We've to, driven ourselves mad. We've, we used to do other things at night that we do research. <laughs> so we've, we've had so many different forms of information about this area. 
which I mean, we're just going to say what we've read, really. One thing I did find about this place, the two brothers farmed it and dissolved their partnership in 1911. The Crane brothers and then one of them had a farm sale in 1917, and guess what was sold, Carla? And here we've got, what's this here, Carla? Redmond's off. <clears throat> Do you know what? I don't know. Stiff, oh. stiff cart. Oh, wow. So they classed it as an old stiff cart. Gosh. And they used to use this for cotton turps about. And hay and straw. Wow, that's lovely, isn't it? This will have been here since 1911. Well, well, earlier than that, because in 1872 there was other people living in here. Cranes lived in here in 1872. Well, according to the book that I've read, like you said, there was three houses in the area, and there was the bottom house, the middle house, which has disappeared, and the top house, which is still here. So the bottom house, we presume, was this one that John and Margaret lived in. Yeah. Crane. And this would have been their... Um... The garden would have been around here. You can just see the wall outline of it. It's amazing, it just puts it so much more into perspective once we've seen them pictures and the Kiaush Bridge and... Yeah, the one we just came over. Yeah, there seems to be like a, a marker stone next to the bridge. And to me, it looks like it's got inscriptions on it, but I'm probably just getting overexcited. Yeah, we do <laughs> get a little bit carried away, but somebody else will tell us, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm seeing things because I'm not sleeping anymore because I'm researching too much. So the little thing was, this little uh, house here, we'll now have a poke inside it. <laughs> this is one of the outhouses on the right hand side of it. It travels down the um, length of the garden. And no matter where you go, the old ivy manages to grow, doesn't it? Just always takes over. And here, right in front of the house, is a little Carla. Yeah? You've seen this? Where are you? Just here. Oh. Look. What's up? The garden. <laughs> she had the uh, garden put in front of the house. See the stones? Oh, right, yeah. So we venture inside now. <clears throat> I actually think that's a window you've just gone through, you know. There's yeah. another picture that we found. There's a, a long window, because that next to it is the door. The door? The door. Look at the wood on the floor. She called it the Dewey. Dewey. You having a brew? So. <laughs> brew. Brew. This is quite an ornate fireplace, to be fair. Such a cute little room. And again, most of these came from Gelling's Foundry in Victoria Street. And I'm sad to be able to remember that place in my youth. What does, what, read out what it says down on the thing there, Carl. Oh, I'll just get down here and do you that. You get down there, go and get, do your told. It says... Oh God, I don't, something Ramsey. I don't know, I can't read it. What? It does say Ramsey underneath though. Does it? Ow. I thought you'd turn the camera around then and just stop and thought, give up on I me. I wouldn't do that to you, my love. Down here. big lintel. <laughs> we come from Balakubra, which is just behind us on the top of the hills. A little nacelle to keep them salt dry. It says 70, 7th of May or 17th of May here. I can't read a year though. That's interesting. <sighs> well, that's the writing, folks. I can't make it out either. It does look like something like Mill Creasts to me. That's what I thought, actually. That's the window. And these holes in the roof remind me what they remind you of, Carl, these holes in the walls. There's two things they remind me of. Pigeon holes. Yeah, and what did the why were they? So fond of the pigeons they were going here? Well, apparently there wasn't much to eat, so they were living on pigeons. 
Yeah, there was no, um, what do they call it, dull those days, was there? I was just looking at that. What's that? Oh. Another one up there. It's probably the wall then, isn't it? So the front door went straight into the living room then, didn't it? That, that's the front door, going by the uh, Picatures. Yeah, you can look on the side to the cart. Lovely fireplace. There's a bed. I wonder if that was a double bed. Oh, that, I'd hate that. How on earth would I push you over there? Oh, you'd have found a way. Yeah, I on the floor. That's one of the original <laughs> beds with the cranes with the carriages slept on. We've been a bit fanciful, you think? Well. It looks like that kind of era, to be honest. It's pretty old, isn't it? Um, and the last person to live here, wasn't it 1950? 1940 something, anyway. Yeah. When they, so when they packed up the places. Yeah, I mean, I've got one of these beds still. It's all the old fireplace. And it's 300 years old, so. Yeah, well, could be, couldn't it? Could be, yeah. God, imagine how. Look at that. So you've got your front door there, and your back door there. Draft city. Well, you know why they like that, don't you? Why? So near the river. Now the river flooded. You see the water coming one door and out the other. Ah. <laughs> Are you <laughs> asshole? <laughs> I so believed you then. No wonder I'm not sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> You're not funny. That actually makes logical sense. <laughs> they just open the doors and go, hey, <laughs> grab a dinghy, folks. Up we go. Flooding. Uh, just a, but there must have been a uh, porch on the back of the store at one time because there's a little corrugated roof, <laughs> cement there. See that? Must have had a concrete. Ah, uh, I see. So the water wouldn't even flow through that, would it? No. Go no. straight back in. Straight so your theory's in. rubbish. It worked for a little while, darling. Yeah, it did. Right, so let's carry on a bit further up the glen. So they had a little outhouse here like a shed or something. That yeah. must have been like a pantry off side from the kitchen there, like, you know. Well, that would be part of the out, outhouses for it, like, you know, with the pigs and stuff like this, because that's a the central wall there again. Right. So according to some of our research, um, Francis Kiausch lived here in the end. Yeah. Yes. Isn't that? 1911? Yeah. Yeah, didn't he, wasn't he renting it and then he bought it for 400 quid? Well, he bought it, um, he was renting it for a while and then 1917, I think, the farm came up for sale. Right. Uh, and a junk farm sale, so he bought it for 400 quid. Which doesn't sound much today. It was a lot those days and ended up when he bought it at 70 acres. Oh, darling, how nice to see you again. So I'm trying to vision from this old picture that we've got from 1930, is it? It was the 5th, 1950. Of this house? Yeah. And you can see a house in the distance over there, which would be the top house that Thomas Kiausch lived in. Yeah, it's got chimney come out, smoke come out of the chimney, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, anyway, when there was an incident that happened around here, and when it did, Mary Crane, I think. Well, anyway, she, in her witness statement, she's seen Mary Kiausch walk into the house where the incident happened. Right. Um, and John Kiausch, the one that was murdered, was in the house. So I was wanting to vision what she would have seen, if you like, you know, in distance wise. And obviously there's trees there now. So she would have seen. Oh, yeah. When you take the trees out and map the foot, you can see they would yeah, have spotted Yeah, yeah. Um, well, let's walk up and see where we're going to get yeah. to. So the house has obviously been knocked down now. And there was a murder that took place there um, in 1872. They used to always erase the houses, didn't they? Yeah. After this sort of thing. Yeah, because of uh, people like me going around talking about Tro it. Trolls, like. <laughs> what do they call them? Well... Well, how many? 150 years ago. So I think yeah. people's souls will have uh, forgiven, moved on. 
Yeah. So anyway, um, it was actually the, apparently the son confessed to doing the murder. Well, they don't really know whether it was the, mo the mother, obviously the wife, who did it or the son or whatever. Nothing really adds up. No, I must admit, I read a, a bit about it. I couldn't decide whether he'd been stabbed with a pitchfork. No, shot with a pitchfork or stabbed, stabbed with, with a gun. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you wouldn't know, you see, because Mary was in the house with the husband and then they were all going up to Thomas's house, which well, is the top house. Had the husband and Mary separated or split or they weren't getting on, were they? They lived separately in the house, so it was divided. So, you know, one was on one side with the top room and one was on the other with the kids. So there was, there were several kids actually. It doesn't say that in this murder book that I've got, but there, I found a family tree um, and there was nine in total of children. Um, a few maybe lost as babies and stuff. Yeah, that did happen those days though, didn't they? Yeah. I think one of them, didn't they emigrate to uh, States. Caesar Kiaush yeah, emigrated. To Wyoming. Yeah. Places. Um, was it Caesar? Oh yes, what was the other name? What was that name? Oh, the one that used to end it, he ended up living in that house, didn't he? Francis. Francis, that's the one. Yeah. Anyway, so um, she was in the house for a little bit. And then she went up to Thomas's house for dinner or whatever they were doing. They were all going up there. And then John, which was John Jr., was in the house for about an hour with his dad. Nobody knows really what happened within that hour. But then he you... turned up at Thomas's house, which is his brother. And he turned up and he was, like, um, quiet or whatever. Not um, himself. Yeah. They said he was a bit of a... Uh, they described as an imbecile, which is... Not he wasn't nice, educated, so... That's what they said those days. So didn't he have a sister as well? There was a sister that was found in the top room. Um, I mean, whatever happened there, I don't know, but she'd, took, she'd gone insane and she was actually sectioned that day and she was taken away on the same cart that they took John away to the uh, Castle Russian. Really? Yeah. So, you know, when it happened, um, they, were, they were preparing the body the next day to... Really? To bury, they were going to have a funeral until the coroner said, "Actually, no, you know, it's something not right about something this. Not right here." So yeah, it all must have been the puncture mark in the chest that got them. Whenever you see these big granites, they're not just haphazardly left on the ground. They're there for a reason. They're markers for when you're in the dark walking home from somewhere, because they always show up in the dark and they glow. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> The wife and the son weren't really bothered that the dad had died. There was always some sort of argument going on. They'd fell out over a, a cow and a chicken. <laughs> so yeah, John, so John owed his dad a, a cow and a, he promised him a cow and a chicken and some land. Yeah, I saw somewhere that he borrowed the money of his dad to buy a suit. Right. For about 40 quid, but that doesn't make sense because 40 quid would be thousands of pounds. So I think that's a bit wrong, that one. Well, we've done so much research about this and there's loads of um, different stories. So uh, there's a lot that I'm not really going to say because I don't want to upset anybody by getting it wrong. Well, it's not upset. I mean, you, you've read the murder. Oh, I'm always getting in trouble for getting things wrong. Well, me as well. <laughs> but you've read the murder book and even that doesn't really make sense from what we've been Well, there's, out, there's two. There's the Manx murders and there's the homicide in the Isle of Man. Uh, Manx murders is more detailed. Yeah. Um, I've brought well, that with me. This one is quite significant because this was the last hanging in the Isle of Man, wasn't it? It was. It was the last hanging ever, actually. Um, but I'll talk about that later. So this here is where it's said to have had the house. Going by stuff I've looked at on Facebook. Yeah, just, just in front of the river, isn't it? Yeah, and there's a section in the book that refers to Mary going down the river to get some uh, bucket of water and stuff like that. One of the little tributaries running into the Sobe River, supplying our wonderful water. So yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but Thomas Kiausch's house is there. So down here would have been 
We're just in the trees there. Just in the trees there, right. yeah. So well, they weren't the, far away from each other, really, were they? No, in that case, there must be, as you said, there must be on that glen, little glade there somewhere then, it must have been. Mm. Me and my suspicious mind. Well, likely so, my love. Likely so. So we're guessing this would be it. There's a, there's a marker there for it, see that? Well, we're not, we're not guessing. It's what I've read on Facebook. No, um, someone on Facebook has said that this was the area this in front it. of the river. And it kind of makes sense a little bit, doesn't it? It does, really. There is a lot of stones here. Oh, sugar. <laughs> Slippery little devils, aren't they? Lovely place to have a house, isn't it? When it just Very sheltered nice. by the river, lots of sun, water to glow. Not look as if it would ever get flooded. <laughs> Not like the other place, <laughs> Carla. Very funny. So there's where we think it would be in this little glade. Strange, isn't it? You know when you know a story about something? Yeah, you it just feels a bit weird. Yeah, you make it up in your head, you think, is it real or am I f feeling because I read about it? Would I think it's, it's good that they uh, put the houses to the ground because I don't know, I don't think I'd like, I wouldn't do this. Well, people wouldn't want to live in them again, would they? No. Well, there are some macabre peoples about. There are. This is a path I haven't seen before. <laughs> oh! Macabre, that's the word I was looking for. Was it? Yeah. Well, you were always calling me macabre. Well, I call you other things too, don't forget. <laughs> I can't actually talk about them today, my darling. Ooh. So I'm guessing that may be the path. Could have been, or we just follow the other road, who knows. But they travelled up. They're now coming up to the other house. This is believed to have been Thomas Kiausch's house. Now, there's a, a thing of how do you pronounce Kiausch? Is it Kiausch or is it Kiewish? I've been told it's Kiausch. I think you're right. I normally am. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> We're walking to the garden now to um, the house. They would have had this for the vegetables. As we said before, it wasn't about money up in these places, it was about survival, so anything that could be eaten. What's your footing? Would be um, considered a treasure. So all the houses are pretty much the same, aren't they? Round here. Yeah. Or any ones that we normally go and look at. Some of these, like, were inhabited up until the late 60s. Right. And as you've already said, Clugget could be spelt a few different ways. C L U double G I T T or I double D. Yeah, end. so that, that's how we kind of found a lot of our information. We had to spell it several ways to get the information. You couldn't even see the lower house from up here anyway. No. Well, it depends whether it's a house or a cottage, doesn't it? <sighs> well, it would have been a house because it was upstairs, downstairs, separate quarters. Um, no, the one down there. No, that's what I mean. It would have All been right. a house because it says the girl, the sister, was found upstairs. She must have upstairs. So I don't... Right? Going by my... Um, family tree thing that I found, uh, there were two sisters that hadn't died, uh, but one died about a year later, so I'm, I'm guessing it could have been the one that was found upstairs. The other one lived to about 70 or something, 60, yeah, 70. I think the last person I found out of chaos that came from this area was died in 1956. That's right, that was uh, Francis. It were. 
and Francis managed to buy the cloak at it eventually. So there's one of the old fireplaces, quite ornate, showing it's quite new because there's bricks and all behind it. So it was either put in after the house is built or it's been bricked up to help. <laughs> this obviously had a double floor as well with the holes there for the beams. Quite a, a big house in so much that there'd be quite a lot of room upstairs. And it looks like we would have a stairway where we're standing rather than a, I reckon, yeah, like just, a, up there. just a half loft above the fireplace or above the rooms. Mm. Last time I was here was about 10 years ago, the roof was fairly intact, although no slates, but all the timbers were still here. <coughs> hey, Watson. Not anymore. Still feels weird to me, it really does. I always found up here, it was quite strange when I would come, I never heard any birds. Hmm. And we've been here three or four times and I still don't hear birds up here. And But that's what we said, isn't it? We may be thinking it because we know about it. Yeah. Maybe these places don't have birds, I don't know. A little bit of our pink paint or is it just a, a uh, decay a of the years? Bit, yeah. There's a explorer thing there. It's always been the year 2022. How dare they? We actually got permission to come up here, folks, so just it is private. Just be careful. Usually there's cattle and sheep in the fields as well, and the cattle are fairly curious about human beings. I'm curious about cattle. Don't do cattle. No, no, yeah. you ran away last time, didn't you? Yeah, you ran away from me. I was faster than you. <laughs> Well, I had the dogs that have killed them. You know, when you look in these places, they're so small, aren't they? No wonder people ended up going to Lally. You couldn't get away from anybody, could you? I've always thought that, you know, um, there's several things that have happened on the Isle of Man, and I've always thought, you know, what on earth were they drinking? The alcohol must have been bloody potent back oh, then. Oh, could be, oh, they made from potato I mean, skins and, and stuff like Yeah, yeah. Be pure alcohol. So they'd be either yeah. skull most of the time, like. The, um, the pitchfork that was possibly used, they dredged the rivers and yeah, they couldn't so. find it. Apparently it was, it was, when they came to the house, it was propped up next to the fire. So like, it, he was in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, they never found it, it was removed then. And there was a pair of pants as well that were covered in blood. Yeah, they some, were Something else I found out too, they, they had a gun in the loft of the house and mm. used to make his own cartridges. Right. Again, it's astonishing to be able to do that. We see John Kiausch, the guy that was hanged in the end, confessed to shooting him once, but it doesn't make any sense because there was six puncture wounds. Yeah. Um, and they reckon to the pitchfork, he went over to Kirk Michael to round up people for the funeral the day before, or the night before, so he probably took the pitchfork with him, lost it somewhere, or got rid of it on the way. Yeah. Mm. I don't think he was that stupid. No, <laughs> clearly not. Um, right, well, we'll go out and walk up the road a bit and see what else we can find, my love. Okay, should we go this way? We'll go that way. Come on, doggies. It'd be weird to camp here, wouldn't it? I don't know, think I'd want to. <laughs> I was just looking at the lovely grass, thinking, hey, the tent would stay up at least, well, you know. Well, compared to where we camped the last time, it's bleak in paradise. Oh, dear. So we're now going to stroll up to Cluggard Falls and uh, see what's up there. Carl's really looking forward to that. Uh -huh. Yeah, I am. You'll have to put your backpack on to go up there because we want to eat our sandwiches, don't we? Yeah, I'll just go get my backpack. <laughs> it's down there. It's a good idea, Carla. <laughs> so there's the house as it stands now in the trees. And Karen behind it. So that it is private property, folks, so don't upset people. <coughs> You've been more or less giving me uh, freedom to the man. Looks like that's the old road up and down. But it doesn't mean we should abuse it. Where do you think is a good place to have our sandwiches? 
Hop, ja. Wat? Hop. Hier. Ja. Oh, Jan, op, uh, somewhere where there's a bit of a breeze. Ja, yeah, it's warm, isn't it? Well, be what I'm wearing, what I'm wearing. My underpants are wet. <laughs> Always nice to share. Yeah, isn't it? As you have said a few times, you weren't planning to do this one today, so this is a bit sort of uh, spur of the moment. So after divesting myself of my coat, onwards we travel. Looking for a spot to have our sandwiches. You know, they abolished hanging in the Isle of Man in 1993. 93, as late as that? Yeah. <coughs> but they didn't hang anybody in the Isle of Man now. It was at a place called Hango Hill in Castletown. Well, you were telling us a story about uh, how Hangover gets us name, didn't you? Ah, so apparent, apparently <coughs> <coughs> Hangover originated from when you, you've been um, Whenever there's a hanging, everyone crowds around to watch and they, they stay there for about a half hour and then they all go off and get drunk and then the next day, when the hanging is over, everyone's hung over. So, so that's why they call it a hangover. Oh, right. I never yeah. knew that. I, I was told in Ireland, in the jail in Ireland... This makes sense. And I tried to Google it today, but they just kept telling me what a hangover is. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> I've had enough of them. Yes. And of course, that's where Hango Hill probably gets his name and from. And Hango Hill, yeah. Some people are going to say, didn't you know that, Ray? <laughs> Being amongst me. Well, I didn't. Gosh, it's close. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we're coming to a flat. <clears throat> that is another little path there. That'll lead next to the river, I reckon. <clears throat> I would love to venture up there if I had the energy. Up where? Up this little road. We may have to go back and up that to get to these falls. Ask for a breeze, my love, and we have one. Yes. Let me get back on this path, you. Ooh, this is blowy. I'm hoping the Clugard Falls are at the top of this little slope, otherwise I'll never hear the end of it. See that look, folks? That's what I call a cheese-making look. Oh, God, Ray. Right, there's a waterfall, we found it, let's go. <laughs> You'll thank me. Shut up. I'm going to hide my joy. That's why it's called the falls. Bloody fall over. Look at those gorgeous buddies you're going to have. Yeah, I'm not letting you have yours. Definitely not for the faint heart of this walk.
that's where we come from. The colour's just gorgeous. <coughs> the gorse and the harebells I've seen, and even the ragwort. Still a joy to see it. So after doing a bit of reconnoitering, one path is just too dangerous. We drop down to the lower path by the river. Then we guess that river's called the Cloggate. Just around the bend, it's what I was looking for. see many pictures of this spot for obvious reasons. It is now. Well, what do you think of that, my love? I nearly died for that. Isn't it beautiful? No. That's the famous Cluggard Falls. The longest drop waterfall in the Alaman. Do you want to be the famous Cluggard Faller? Don't be like that, love. I'm going to knock you out. We've been here. They don't even put sheep on this land because it's too dangerous. <laughs> Look at us. That, no wonder I send you home. Oh. You can go home for a whole week now. Bless. So this is the Cluggard Falls, folks. Prickles in my hands. My legs are like jelly, because I don't like heights. <laughs> You're an asshole. I'm going back. Uh, Carla's middle name was Mona. You're... Oh! See? I'm bringing a stick with me next time. If you're going to take me on these ventures... Ah! I have a ten-year-old that needs me, you know. Oh, I need you. You're not getting your sandwiches. You can chase me for them, asshole. She doesn't really mean that, folks. What? I'm just saying you don't really mean that. Oh, I do. You remember when I said I was going to meet you tomorrow? Oh, right. That's a good idea. And people think that it's me that leads you to death. Whatever. Look on the bright side, you don't have to come up again. I'm never coming again. So that was Cluggard Falls, well worth the walk. No, it's not. Don't Nearly getting to... blown over there. Don't you listen to her. It's really high. Here's me with the dodgy knee. Let's go for walks with Ray Kelly, said no one ever. I've never heard a woman use so many swear words and not repeat one once. I know someone who doesn't like my swear words. How is that oven, by the way? <laughs> Apparently it's working well. <laughs> but she's got no bun in it. <laughs> Boxing day of all days. Yeah, I was with you. I don't know how I managed to do both jobs the same day. Let me hold this for you. No, go on. I know what you're planning. You've pushed me today, you have. And she's perked up now because she's going to get sandwiches and sausage on the stick. <laughs> she's had a lot of pricks in her hand up here today, haven't you, love? Yeah. The biggest one walking with me. I'm glad I haven't bought that wedding dress. Well, I don't think Amazon would take it back. You said it wouldn't have fit me anyway. <laughs> Well, now I feel a bit more safer now. I spotted something on a rock before. Did you? I wasn't telling you because... You were in a bad mood? Yeah. It looked like some metal. My, I sensed you were in a bad mood, you know. Why? Because I was talking. I feel the vibes. <laughs> the dogs were cowering. At least Penny waited for me. Not a sheep in sight. Even they ran away today. No sheep round here, is there? Fine dogs, I found us another little track here off the Cluggard track. We're just going to take it and see where it takes us to. <coughs> I 
It's a path of somewhere, Carla. Aye. Roasting. I am. It's got to have been something here, because there's loads of stones. Well, there is. <laughs> there we are, way. Other interesting thing, see there on the side, that big white granite stone there. Yeah. That's there for a reason, not just dug out. That's to light the way to somewhere. Oh, there's, oh, there's more stone here, girl. In there. Your stone eye again. Be stone eye. Woo. -hoo. Ah, it's like a little entrance. Well, oh, right. it's too small for a door. Huh. That's weird. There's something else I've seen on Facebook saying that there was a mill found here. Yeah, I read that too, but I'm not sure where you'd have it. I wonder if this stone uh. is some of the stone they took from the old house when they knocked it down. What do you think? Maybe. Why don't they just build a walled area? It's just strange. I mean, it'd be to keep animals of some sort in, wouldn't it? I don't know whether I can see anything here that would look like a... It looks like a race to you. No. Strange, huh? Mm. Oh. Oh my goodness me. It's a good idea wearing black today. I bet it is, girl. <laughs> I wish I could get in that river with you, doggies. Go on, I'll let you. <sighs> I don't see anything here, eh? that looks like a mill at all. Come on, Penny. There's a worm in it. Save me back your lunch. Well, getting the kipper you had this morning. <laughs> Not a story behind the kipper's folks, but we'll go for that another day. I remember having one of these as a kid, and I bit into it, and there's a bloody worm in it. Kind of put you off a little bit. It's a bit like me with eggs, isn't it? Mm. That's nice. <laughs> you always spit out there. Roxy, what are you doing? Oh, hang on. <laughs> what are you doing down there, dog? Huh? So like down there, Rox. He's got the right idea. Is it slippy? Go get it. Go, Go get it. the stick. Go find it. <laughs> Go on, Pen. Go find it. You found it. Pega trees. Oops. Oh, don't you be falling in the river. Oh. I'll only laugh. Yeah, you wouldn't be there con concerned, would you? You just hold that camera up. You'll heal. We walk now's little path by the river. It's 
So we're kind of coming to the end of the Kiowish story a bit, aren't we? You are. We're kind of coming to the end of the Kiowish story. But yeah, well, I'm going to read a little bit out of the books of his confession, which I find it quite heartbreaking, really, because his brother did tell him to, uh, will you just confess to the murder and, st uh, and stop everyone accusing mother? So, you know, he did, so I'll read a section of it over at Kiowish's Bridge. Yeah, it's interesting that the, that the sister did go berserk too, isn't it? It just, it, it's, it, I find it quite heartbreaking. Like, did he do it, didn't he do it? But he got hung, you know, and it's crap, isn't it, really? Were you going to tell us all about the, uh, how hanging and all the other words came about? Ah, well, I went to Ireland a few years back, well, had a bit of a cycle trip and I went to visit Crumlin's jail and I had a, a guided tour and I'm not really normally into guided anything but um, it was interesting so the guy said that the word hanging came from when somebody was hanged everyone would gather to watch it and they'd all get really drunk afterwards so the next day after was the hangover and that's why it's called hangover. And didn't they have something over a rope, did you say? Oh, well, another thing, this is weird, this is how we know our phone listens to us. Because <laughs> I told you about this. Yeah, and then yeah. I seen something on Facebook about um, when people didn't have anywhere to sleep for the night, there used to be like a rope going round. I'll have to find the picture. And what you do is you just hang over the rope. Mm. And, yeah, that's, it was called a hangover. I had a hangover last night. But that doesn't make sense of having it the night before, really. Well, who knows? I've never heard that before. No, I haven't. Hanging over a rope to sleep. I couldn't... You'd do it. I couldn't sleep over a rope. I could sleep on the rope, love. <laughs> and I suppose that's where oh. hang, and the name Hango Hill would come from too, isn't it? Yeah. Um, well, you see, Kiaush wasn't hanged at Hango Hill. Uh, it was all in a bit of a disrepair sort of way. Overused, obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, it hadn't been used for about 40 years before that, had it? Yeah, uh, it hadn't actually, no. Um, but uh, they had to get some people in to build a new, whoa, gallows. Uh, and nobody wanted to do it. Well, they they were like, no, nah, I don't want to do it. Anyway, some young lads ended up building these new gallows for him. And uh, <laughs> the weirdest thing is it exclusively hanged John Kiausch for the first and last time and never used again. Hmm. It was abolished in 1993. Which is, again, quite criminal, really, when you think about that time scale. Hmm. Hmm. Something about, it was a yard or something they called it, wasn't it? It was, it was, it was over at, uh, where well, they called it the Stone Yard, uh, which is across from um, Castle Russian. Yeah, um, a, right by the river. It's a business, isn't it? It is a business, yeah, and I'm so not going to name it. We won't it. mention it. So. Don't need to. This is like a cute little pathway up to there, isn't it? I think it's a lovely little pathway. That was obviously up there for something because this is like a car track, not just a person track. Yeah. So there's something going on up there. Maybe it was a mill. I don't know. Because I said when this place was sold off or got rid of it, it was over nearly 80 acres, so it would be quite a substantial amount of land, really. Yeah, didn't Francis buy the Cluggage for 400 quid something? Yeah, yeah, he did. I love that. House for 400 quid. Brilliant. Ah. <laughs> The thing that really got me the most was the cart still in the yard from the sale yeah, of 1911. Yeah. That just threw, blew me away, really. Kind of comes to an end now, this little track. Watch your head, short ass. OK, big girl. <laughs> I'm going to go this way. So we're nearly back where we started from then, girl. Yep. There's Thomas Kiausch's house on the left.
So that bridge there, I wonder if that was a Ford back well, in the day. Would be, wouldn't it? Yeah, because um, the other bridge is known as Kyoto's Bridge. Now we're going to go back now, sit on the bridge. Yep, have a little read. This fella wrote um, some Fulton books. I might, have a look at, I might have a look at that. Right. Do you know him, Ray oh, Kelly? He's a, apparently he's a really nice bloke. No, nah, it's not that one. Oh, isn't it? No. Oh, you're getting confused. <laughs> some lovely photographs I heard. Really? And apparently one of them's out of print now, volume two, but that's just what I've heard. <laughs> It's not volume two though, is it? It's volume one. Volume two's out of print. Oh, yeah. I would very rarely argue with you, my sweet, but that I would. Why? Just the last view of where the house was, we assume. Judging by the amount of stones lying around. Years ago, I um, mistaken this area for the Faulty Will one, you know, at the very top up there. Yeah. And I remember I had a look on the, the Fulton page at my error <laughs> of saying, oh, this, wasn't this that area? <laughs> and you know what? Not one person commented and said, no, it isn't. <laughs> they just happily ignored me and thought, idiot. <laughs> and now, of course, you're... A bigger well, idiot. No, a bigger, bigger idiot. Ref. You've made a wise decision, my love. Wise decision. And we finally uh, close down this episode as the river meanders down through Sulby to the sea. So we're sat at Kyosha's bridge and we've got an old picture of the bridge as well. Yeah, I think, not, not sure when it was, but it's the 1930s, I think. My museum, great for information from the past. So who took it doesn't say. So I was going to say a bit more information about this. Um, well, the confession really. So I've got these two books here. A little bit of advertising there for these people. Uh, they're well thumbed, folks. Well read. I wonder if I was going to say, what's that mean? Uh, right, so let's have a look. Why did I not hold the page? Well, that's the sort of thing I do, isn't it? <laughs> and a lovely picture too, a black and white picture from very early on of people ploughing in this area with a pair of horses, a painting it is. I'll stick that up as well because it's very relative to the place and the time that it was done. The big hill behind me is called Mount Karen. So this is... Um John Kyosha's kind of confession, if you like. Yes, it is. A confession made by Kyosh to the Reverend Ferrier. And this was printed in the newspaper. So he says, It was through darkness I did it, because I did not know any better. I had no schooling, so I did not know my duty or what I was doing. I never would have done it if I had schooling. I feel this from what I have learnt since I had been here. So he's referring to Castle Russian. I used now and then to go to chapel. Oh, I used now and then to go to chapel, but I did not give much heed to these English preachers. I did not understand them. A day or two I prayed to God, if I was doing anything wrong, to put it before me. And when the evening came, I could not help it. The gun was loaded a day or two before. Something came on at me that night. I took the gun. It was in my room. It was loaded with slugs. I shot him as he was sitting before the fire. I shot only once. I was about four yards off him. If I had my life to live over again, it should be a better one. I have learnt more since I came here than I did in all my days. I hid the gun and I went out to see my brothers. I never looked to see if he was dead. I knew well enough from what I saw that he was well nigh finished. I hope others will take warning from me 
not to live as I did, but to get schooling and to attend the chapel. I am very sorry for what I have done, but I will leave now. I did not know what I was doing at the time. The neighbours were telling me that if they were in my clothes, they would deal with him. Hmm? I hid the gun in the thatch of an outhouse and I went to my brother's. It was not done with a fork. I wish to thank all who have done. I wish to thank all who have had to do with me since I have been here. I may have got as much kindness from mother, but not from father. As I have done from all here, I pray to God to forgive me for all my sins. I trust in Jesus that he will save me. I wish poor father would be safe. In making this statement, I have no hope of getting off, but I hope to find the Lord. I am willing enough if I could get off, but I must find the Lord still. I know I must be executed. This is Monday. I have, haven't I, only two more whole days to live. And then he marked it with an X. Hmm. It's quite it's sad, isn't it? It's sad, isn't it? Mm. Very sad, actually. Yeah, and the fact that he confessed, and it may not even been him. Maybe covering up for Just somebody to save else. Save his mother, maybe. And this is that other book. That famous Manx author. Yeah, you that there fella. I'm that, I am that fella. Hardly famous though. Just happy. So the guy that hanged him is in your book. You've named him in your book. Yeah, I would have got it from somewhere. I bet you don't know what page it is, do you? No. There's an index at the back if you... There you are. You uh, can uh, just I've just gone past, past it. There we are. So, William Calcraft is the official UK hangman who did the job, in Ray Kelly's words. But a Mr John Cowley was asked to do it. He was. Now, he's from Cramog, and he was asked several years before to do another hanging. Refused and he to, refused to do this one because that one was so traumatic. Yeah. I, <laughs> there's a guy called Hector Duff... We've met him a few times. I had a conversation with him before he died, and he was telling us that um, the Cowleys went to live on the Craggans in the 40s or 50s. And uh, one of the Cowleys used to say to the labourer there when they were loading the sheaf onto the cart and cart it into act, he was shouting, Be careful with that rope! That's the rope that home cowish. <laughs> really? Gosh. I don't you mean um, Cramick, not Craggans? No, they moved to the Craggans from Cramick. Oh, did they? Yeah, they did. Sorry, I'll just shut up. And as I said, Hector Duff used to go up to Cramick in the 50s and 60s to meet up, but it was a ruin then, apparently. Gosh. I like the sense of humour. Yes. I do. Most of the word, macabre. Macabre. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's it, folks. Thank you for viewing. Hope you got to the end, because the end will make more sense of the whole video. This has been quite a harsh one to do for us, I think. We usually we have happy things to report on, but this is not a happy event. No. And probably didn't need to happen. No, but, um, you know, it's history. He was the last man hanged, and, you know, why not talk about what happened? Yeah, the folks who were around. I mean, the Kerridge family left here in the mid-1930s, and they were a very popular, renowned Manx family at the time. Mm. Obviously, the trauma of what had happened passed them by, and they actually regained their um, standing in the community. We did try to find um, headstones. We found some Kiosh headstones at um, Balaf. Old Kirk Balaf. Um, is that what it's called? Just Balaf. Old Black Old, Old Balaf Church. Church. Uh, but they dated way before this, yeah. 1872. And then I came across another one that was, um, looks like it's Francis, which was the, the, the guy that lived here, um, Francis Kiausch, and then had a wife and then a daughter. Yeah, he um, left. I think he left here in the late 1918 or early 1920s, they left here. But I have no idea where that headstone is. I took a picture of it from Facebook or where I'd found it. Um, I'd, so, love, I'd like to know where it is, really. So if you want to do a bit of homework yourself, it probably is on Facebook. Search it out. It is. It's in the Solby Valley um, page. So that's it, folks. We're now going to go and get some dinner. Or some food anyway. Aren't we, darling? Yes, I'm hungry and I'm very hot. You look hot.
Okay, dogs, let's go. Come on, let's go, doggies. Come on. Let's watch Roxy in the bridge again. It's funny, isn't it? Go on, Roxy. Go on, Rox. Off you go. <laughs> that always makes me laugh. Right, you go run back. <laughs>